Rachel Carson's Silent Spring, widely regarded as a groundbreaking work in environmental literature, focuses on the potential harmful impacts of pesticides, particularly aerial spraying of pesticides like DDT, on the environment. Rachel Carson's book serves as a public warning gathering expert opinions on the dangers associated with this destructive practice. Carson not only presents accounts of contamination caused by pesticides, but also develops a broader argument about the proper relationship between humans and nature, contributing to the growth of the deep ecology movement. She highlights the interconnectedness of all living things and systems. Through a parable envisioning a future where silence prevails due to the devastating effects of pesticides on the environment, Carson establishes her thesis. In an interconnected world, she asserts that humanity must exercise extreme caution in wielding its newfound power to shape the environment in order to prevent the destruction of the very systems that sustain us. As part of her public education endeavor, Carson provides an overview of the major families of pesticides, referring to them as biocides, due to their non-specific effects on various organisms, not just insects. Having established her conceptual framework and identified the chemicals in question, Carson proceeds to examine the effects of pesticides on different components of the natural world, such as water, soil, plants and bird life. Drawing upon an array of anecdotal and statistical evidence, along with expert testimonies, she demonstrates that pesticides are far more lethal than their manufacturers admit. Furthermore, she emphasizes that within nature, these chemicals accumulate and interact in ways that are difficult to predict particularly since the United States allocated little to no research funding on the topic. Carson then investigates specific disastrous spraying programs and shifts her focus to the impact of pesticides on human health. She criticizes the misleading marketing of poisonous pesticides, reveals the pervasive presence of these chemicals in the food supply, and highlights the lack of regulation. She presents evidence suggesting that these chemicals are carcinogenic. In conclusion, Carson argues that not only are pesticides harmful to the environment and human health, but they have also failed to achieve their intended purpose. Pests often rebound dramatically after spraying when the natural checks and balances within ecosystems have been disrupted. Additionally, many insects are rapidly developing resistance to new pesticides, resembling a dangerous arms race. Carson asserts that the only way forward is to emulate natural systems, by prioritizing biological controls over chemical interventions whenever possible. This entails identifying and deploying natural predators of pests, instead of relying solely on chemical eradication methods. Given the wealth of information she presents, Carson advocates for a prudent approach that eschews the flashy and arrogant pursuit of easy solutions. She suggests humbly treading the road less traveled by, relinquishing the notion that nature exists solely to serve human interests.